Ch a chapter that you may remember. I'm going to ask you if you remember it. Is, is, the question is, is Jesus building your foundation? Who has built the foundation of your mind? Who has built what you are? All of us are so we're something, right? We're there, we, we have some mental uh, memories and we have uh, a lot of things going on, emotions and things going on inside of us. Uh, did, did Jesus build that? Or is Jesus building in that? Is Jesus working in that? That's the question. Here's, here's uh, our scripture that we're going to start with. I don't know if anyone re recognizes that scripture. Anyone recognize that scripture? Why do you recognize that scripture? That's what we were doing last week. Oh, you, that's what you were doing the last two weeks. Hey, God has a message for you. I guess so. Does God have a message for you or not? Yeah. Now, you know, God put this message in Pastor Martin's heart. God bless him. And today he can't talk, so I'm doing it. <laughs> God put that message in his heart, and we're not done with it. You know, uh, so let's. The, this is this message kind of takes you back to kindergarten. We thought we were in college, but now we're in kindergarten again. We got to go back and start all over again. How, how, how many need to know that you need to just redo some things in your life? Many. There have been a few times. When I've had to just go back through everything and revamp it, re rehab it, rebuild it, redo it, and sometimes just erase the whole darn thing, you know? And so let's read it. I'm going to read it to you. It says, Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the what? Rock. Oh, you guys are Lydia. You guys are on it. I'm going to start over again, though. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, who's talking here? Jesus. Yeah. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine, Jesus is saying, if you're hearing the, if you hear these words, now, got to hear these words. I don't know how to do it. If I jump on a chair, I, I saw the look on Pastor Martin's face when I jumped on the chair two weeks ago. Or three weeks ago, he didn't like it. <laughs> I feel like jumping on the chair. Hear his words. What do I got to do? What do I got to do? I ripped up my papers. But and, and, uh, one day my notes, are like, what do I got to do? Hear Jesus' words. Hear his words. And just imagine, God must have felt the same way. Here he says, he, he, he's talking to uh, Adam. In the creation in Genesis 1, Adam didn't hear his words. He speaks to, he speaks through the prophets to the people of Israel. And they didn't hear his words either. They killed the prophets. He speaks to John the Baptist and they cut off his head. They didn't hear his words either. God speaks through Jesus and they crucify him. Still not hearing the words. The apostles rise up, start speaking the words of Jesus, and they kill them too. Now we're sitting here reading what Jesus is saying, and he's saying to listen to his words. You got that? Yep. It's all in context, it's all there with the red letters. I don't have that highfalutin red letter Bible. But if I had it, it'd be in red letters. Some of you got that <laughs> Cadillac Mercedes Benz Bible. There you go. So he's saying, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice, practice, practice. Everybody say, help me out. Practice. practice. I'm sorry. I'm excited. I mean, it's, this is, practice. Practice. Got to put it into practice. Yeah. Got to put it into practice. These words, you got to put it into practice. If you don't put it into practice, it's not going to work. Bottom line. All right? If you don't get it off the ink and the paper and into the heart and into the feet, it's not going to work. There are so many Christians that have come and gone.
people come to church and they say, and, and then they stop going to church and then I, I talk to them and maybe you have too and they said, oh, that Christian stuff didn't work for me. It didn't work. First you got to hear Jesus' words. Then you got to put it into practice. Let's go on. Starting at the beginning again. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rains came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation. It had its foundation. It says it had its foundation. It had its foundation. One more time. It had its foundation on the rock. Its foundation was on the rock. Who's the rock? Jesus. 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 Talking about Jesus, the Word of God, the, the manifested Word of God in the flesh. The Word of God. Foundation. But everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Bill, what did that say? Do you remember what it said? Uh, he had another version there. It's the message. But if you are just to use my words in Bible studies and don't work on them in your life, you're like a stupid carpenter who built his house on a sandy beach. And the storm rolled in and the waves came up and collapsed the house like a house of cards. And like a stupid carpenter. A stupid, there's a smart carpenter and a stupid carpenter. That, that's pretty clear, I think, okay? So don't <laughs> let's say the program doesn't work. Or don't let's say the Bible doesn't work. Or don't say Jesus helped that guy and that guy and that guy, but it isn't working right here. It's not working. Because it, quite honestly, it makes me very angry when I hear stuff like that. Because I know my God. I know the work of my Father. And when I see the work of my Father in Heaven in someone, I know that work. Because that's the Spirit of God working in them. And I also know, I don't say anything, I play dumb, I play like the stupid carpenter. I also know when the work of God is being blocked. I also know when they're putting the wrong 2 by 4s in, in, in the wrong place, and the house is going all crooked, or whatever. Now, this is a metaphor, right? It's an example. It's a teaching. You could be, we could be talking about the house you live in, or we could be talking about this house, this temple. The Bible talks about both as in, in metaphor. Let's talk about this house, this temple. It uses a, the, the word uh, practice and foundation are there. Let's talk about foundation. Your, your fundamental beliefs. What you think. What you think and what I think determine how we act. Are we in agreement there? Say amen if you agree. Amen. If you don't, well, go to the bathroom or something. <laughs> Our what we believe causes us to act. If someone says something that makes you really, really mad, you're going to react. Okay? <clears throat> if there is something, if you're afraid of something, you can be afraid of something, but want something greater than what your fear is. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. You can want it so bad that even though you're afraid, you're going to jump right past that fear because you want it that bad. Amen? What does Proverbs tell you to seek and look for? Proverbs chapter 1. Somebody help me. Tell, tells wisdom. Wisdom. Seek wisdom like it were gold. Seek it with, with all you got. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Foundation. It's built on the rock. Jesus, the Word, the Word, foundation. What, how do you? How do we think? 
How did you begin to think like that? You, well, I think we all speak English here, right? We're hoping so. Some of us speak other languages. <laughs> and, um, but uh, when we learned to talk, you weren't born talking or speaking English. Someone taught you how to speak English. You weren't born uh, putting pants on the way you put them on. If someone would have taught you to put them on head first, that's the way we'd all be walking around because that's how they taught us. We're doing many things that we were taught. And we act according to many things that were done to us, good or bad, or shown to us, right or wrong. And we had parents that taught us things that were good and bad. We had brothers and sisters that taught us things good and bad and did things to us good and bad. And we had people around us that did things good and bad. And all of this formed a, a way of thinking. And, and we got to this point where we had foundational beliefs. This is what we think. This is our personal experience. This is how I believe based on my experience and what I think. That's how where we got. And Jesus is saying, therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature and all things are passed away and all things become new. Amen. And then he says, put, take off the old man and put on the new. And Jesus goes, and the Bible goes around telling us things like that. Cast down every vein imagination and everything that exalts itself against the name of Jesus Christ. And we got all these things that are said, erase it. In many different ways, the Bible's telling us, er er erase that stuff. Set that stuff over there. If, if we could physically take all that stuff and take it out of our heart, and shove it right over there and put it right there. That would be nice, right? Mm -hmm. But instead, that stuff grabs us like the tentacles of an octopus and tries to choke us and, and pull us down and destroy us and kill us. Well, all that would be nice and we could deep it, dive into psychology and we could dive into you know, all these different ideas and things that could happen, but, but Jesus is... Uh, approach to this is therefore if anyone hears these words of mine and puts them to practice hearing hearing the words are you hearing the words Jesus is offering us a way out and remember all the people try to stop him talking Jesus is offering us a way out what if just what if what if you can Pray. What if you can read Psalms? And what if you can read Proverbs and you can meditate on these things and get them in your heart and in your spirit and get the Word of God in your heart and your spirit and these things start marching right past you and you say, and you look at them and your foundation is changed. Because you got to change that foundation. Because in my foundation, when I started out, people, there were people who did things to me that made me hate. Made me a hater. There were people that did things to me that, that made me want to dull my senses. So I went and did that. There were people that influenced me. I, I had friends, neighbors, people that I hung around with. They all had an influence, and I would react according to how they told, you know, how we hung around together. This is what we do. And, and so what this is telling me is that i got to change that. i got to change that. i got to see God in a way that destroys strongholds. You know what a stronghold is? To, that destroys strongholds where the the devil has held me like a prisoner for a long time Jesus is saying to listen to his words to build a good foundation and I'm saying build it on his word 
So if you have the word of God in you, it's working, okay? But if say you don't have the word of God, God going through you, then you got the word of man going through you. You've got the world ideas and opinions and imaginations and things going through you. But when you have the word of God and worship and praise, worship and praise is so important. There are some people in here who have not gotten delivered because they won't let it go. They won't let it go and worship God all the way. He had just not been released because of that. Because that's part of healing. Once in a while, throwing up your hands in the air and just praising God or singing with all your heart. Do you know that when you cry, there's healing in it? Did you know that? When, when tears flow, there is some kind of healing in us that, that takes place. And when we hold that back, that doesn't happen. That little thing of healing, that little part that needed to be healed, that little thing that was going on there. So, so I have this influence of, and I'm not criticizing my parents because I have pretty good parents. My dad's sitting right there. I can't say too much of it. <laughs> cut me off in the inheritance. <laughs> I have, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's the thing. That's bad. You got, I had a mom and dad had brothers, had all the neighborhood kids, all the little homie guys, and all that junk going on. All telling me how I should grow up and what I should do and how I should react. But now I got Jesus. Now I got Jesus. Let's, let's look at this thing right here. Let's look at the next part of this. God gave us, gave the church a gift. Believe it or not, I'm your gift. <laughs> I may not look like you wanted me to. Maybe you think I'm not that cute. Well, that's your problem, brother. <laughs> this is what you got. This is what this is what God sent you. I am your gift today. All right. But we, as a church, we as a people. We needed help with this foundation thing. We needed help getting that emotional eraser out. We needed help uh, getting that spiritual cleansing, you know. And so, so God uh, gave the church prophets and apostles and pastors and teachers and, and, and Jesus as the cornerstone. Jesus is the, the immovable Cornerstone. I, I forgot the bagels. Oh, I didn't. They did. Isaiah twenty-eight sixteen. It says, "So this is what the Sovereign Lord says: Say, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone." A precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. Here God is speaking to Israel. He's not speaking to you. But there are some principles in this that we can take from there that we can understand. God is telling them, that he he's saying I, that he's the sovereign Lord. He's the only God. I lay a stone in Zion. Zion is a is symbolic of the church. A tested stone, a precious corner stone, for a sure foundation. He sounds to me like he's talking about the rock, Jesus, Jesus, the one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic, will never be walking in fear, will never be stricken with confusion, will never be... Does that make sense? That we, that God spoke through Isaiah, the prophet, before Jesus was born, telling the people that there is one coming who is going to be a cornerstone. 
Cornerstone is the first stone set when you're laying block. That stone has to be perfect, that, that brick or block has to be perfectly level before they start building on it. And it also is referred to the, a stumbling block. Ever heard of Jesus referred to as a stumbling block? That's because you could be walking right along life just like I was, 31 years old, 1981. <laughs> I didn't care about God, man. You know, hey, hey, God, uh, if, if God wants to talk to me, I'm right here in this bar, man, with my cigarette, my and you can smoke back in those days in the bar, with my my beer and my cigarette. I'm right here. Come on, where is he? Let's talk. Sit down, I'll give him a beer, I'll buy him a beer. That was my attitude. But I'm walking along, walking along, minding my own business, not looking for God, and all of a sudden I stumble over this stumbling block, this rock that was Jesus. And when I heard the word, it messed with my mind. It made me stumble. Because I was going that way, and Jesus took me a different way. You see? And, and so, when, when that takes place, or took place, it started this new foundation. Yeah, it is still going. Some of us are like uh, a tilt-up wall. We're talking metaphorically now. Building. Tilt-ups, they lay it all, whatever they do, and then they tilt it up, and now, before you know it, there's a whole building right there. Like that. Some of us are like one that's being plastered, it's all smashed up and beat on and whatever, and they do all that to you, and that's how you feel all jacked up. And then there's others that go brick by brick. One brick, put another brick, cut a brick, put it, and, 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 and that one didn't fit. So when I do lay bricks, they don't always fit. So put another brick and like that. So that's us. It doesn't matter how we are. We're going to get there, right? We're all on our way there. It doesn't matter how fast. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. To society, it matters. To God, God cares that you're just going in that direction. You're going in that direction. We're obeying and going in that direction. The, the world and sometimes the church measures us by financial... Um, prosperity. And sometimes the church will measure us by uh, having a new car or having new clothes or having new this or having an influential job or something like that. But that's not the way God does it. And, and I'll throw this in just extra. You don't have to pay for it. Extra. Another gift. Another gift. Besides myself. <laughs> Jesus loves you just the way you are. Can you accept that? Jesus loves you just the way you are. There are some things He wants to change, but He loves you just the way you are. And that is a great revelation. And that is a wonderful, beautiful thing. And, and this is a good thing to build on. That's another brick. Let's look at one more scripture. We're almost done. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 to 3. Paul is writing here. It says, by the grace, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation under other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold and silver and costly stones and wood or hay or straw, their work will be shown for what it is. Because the day will bring to light, bring it to light, and it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. I want to focus on, on 10 for just a second. It says, 
I laid a foundation as a wise builder. Now something I've shared with you many times, but I'm going to say it again. When you look at the New Testament, you see Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, the, and, and those are talking about what Jesus said. What Jesus did. There are eyewitness testimonies as to the things He said and He did. But Jesus didn't tell us how to do things. He was showing us how to do things and telling and explaining to us how things were. Paul comes then. Then you have the book of Acts, which is the history of the church. And then you have Paul's letters. And Paul's letters are telling us how to do it. How we can accomplish what Jesus was talking about. So he is explaining it to us, how explaining to us how we can do it. So he is building on top of that foundation that is Jesus. He's laying it out so we grab hold of the words that Paul wrote and we meditate them. What does that mean, meditate them? That doesn't mean read your daily bread and yes, us. That's the end of it. That's not it. You read the daily bread. The daily bread will not save you. I'm telling you. But meditating on some of the words of Jesus will save you. And meditating on the thoughts that are in the daily bread will save you. I'm not talking about save your soul. I am talking about save you from... Well, let me tell you. you know, It's funny about religions. You can look at Hinduism. You can look at Buddhism. You can look at Judaism. You can look at Christianity. And you can look at Islam. And they all agree with one thing. You know who the problem is? <laughs> it's you. There's five major religions in the world that don't agree on God or what God is or whatever. But they all agree that you're the problem. And I'm the problem. What does that tell you? Yourself. We must be the problem. The pro <laughs> it's not the other people. It's not the other stuff. It must be me that's the problem. So something's got to change in me. I got this junk floating by, this thing that angers me, this person who did this evil thing to me, then it keeps knocking on my door and it starts coming this way. But, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus set me free from that. Oh, but it keeps coming back. That's all right. Jesus set me free from that. But you know what? It's trying to get in my head. He that is within me is greater than he that is in the world. That's what the Bible says. And, and, and then the Bible tells us also that no weapon informed against us will prosper. Brother, that, brothers, there's all these scriptures in the Bible that God designed for the purpose of winning that battle when that thing comes floating by. That temptation comes at you. If, if there's more words of the world in you than the Word of God in you, you will gravitate towards that worldly thing and give in. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And all authority and power is given unto Him. Remember that? All authority and power is given to Him. I'm under the covering of Jesus Christ. I'm under the protection of Jesus Christ. And you or no one can do anything to me unless He allows it. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. And so, uh, I don't know if you got that part. But the foundational beliefs changing in us changes our attitude, changes our thinking, changes our character, changes our personality, changes us. Yes, it does. That's what needs to take place. So, here you have, by the grace of God, by the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder. Someone else is building on it. Now, who's building on your foundation now? Who's building? So that, or someone in your life that's bothering you or doing things 
Are, are they the ones that are building on your foundation now, creating emotional disturbances in your life, uh, things that are bringing your attention to stuff that are distracting you from God, all these mental calisthenics that go on in, in life? Hey, where's your foundation? Get in the Word. Get in the Scriptures. Get them in your heart. Get them in your spirit. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. How about that? I say it again. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. Amen. Hold on to that. You talk to somebody, you talk to a Christian, and you ask them, well, what is the scripture you know the best? And, and if they have memorized one or know it, you know, it doesn't have to be memorized, but they just know it. You know why they know it? Because they held on to that scripture. Because it cost them some tears. Because it cost them some pain. Because they were in a place that was very bad and dark at one point, And God met them there at that scripture and at that place. And, and, and God delivered them from fear. And God delivered them from the emotional distress and whatever was going on. And now there's another brick in that foundation. You see? But why don't we just let it go? Why don't we just let God build a new foundation in us? Why don't we quit trying to be big me? Why don't we quit trying to be the show? Why don't we quit trying to uh, cry to our, to our own self with all that stuff? Nobody likes me. Nobody pays attention. No, no one really cares. No one... All of that's directed at me. I'm supposed to be directing my attention at him. Not me. It's not all about me. It's all about Him. And when we get that idea, it's not all about me. It's about Him. You know what? We learned something. There's another prayer. Praise God. Thank God. Thank God for His Word. I thank the Lord for His Word and the delivering power of His Word. His, His teachings are awesome. Let's go to 11. For no one can lay any other foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ can't lay another foundation that's going to work. There's not another way to do it. Some of you have had a lot of money at one time. Some of you have had a lot of different things at one time. And today maybe you don't have those things. Or maybe you have a lot of it. Or maybe you're in the process of getting a lot of it. And, and, and we're all in different places. However, the bottom line is, whatever that is, that's not what we're talking about. We're not even talking about that. When God meets you in heaven, say we get there, smelling like smoke or whatever. When God meets you, in, when Jesus meets you in heaven, He's not going to say, how many houses did you have? Did you pay your mortgage payment on time? You know, did, did you buy your son a car? Did you, what inheritance did you leave back there for your family? He's not going to ask. He doesn't care about all of that. He's going to say, what did you do with Jesus? What did you do with my word? The revelations I gave you, the, the body I, that was broken for you, what did you do with all of that? That's what, he, that's what it's about. You know? So, some of us need an overhaul. Every couple of years, I need an overhaul. You know, I'll tell you the truth. Every, every so often, I need to go, man, I need to go through the New Testament again because I've got to chat up. I need it like now, not tomorrow. And, and i got to go through it again. You know, that's 33 years now, and i still got to go through it. You'd think I'd know something by now. You'd think that I would have grasped something. You'd think I'd have that memorized by now, but I don't know anything. I know less than when I started. The only thing I know is I can't do anything. That's all I know. The only thing I know is I don't know anything anymore. I knew a whole lot when I started, but now I don't know anything. You know? And, and, and I thought I knew God at one point, and now I realize, you know what? I don't know God. 
The only thing I know that is he is that he loves me. That's all I know. The only thing I know is he's got my back. That's what I know. And the only thing I know that, that over those 33 years, there have been people said they were my friend, and they ain't my friend today. And there were people that said, oh, man, I will be with you for the rest of my life, Ron Tovar. I, you know, I love what you teach. I love what you show. I'm, I'm with you. One guy that had no legs, man, he, he, he promised me he'd be with me till he died. Because God healed him. You know, he healed him from the waist up. He had legs, but they didn't work. And, and healed him from the waist up. He says, I'll be with you till you die. I'll watch your back forever. Because God healed me when you prayed for me. Man, I haven't seen that guy for 20 years. <laughs> I don't even know if he's still alive. The only one I know is Jesus. The only thing I know is he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Everybody else, they, they can lie on you, they can cheat on you, they can stab you in the back, they can smile in your face and take your wallet out, in the back, out of your back pocket when you ain't looking. But I'll tell you what, Jesus is with me all the way, all the time, every time, and every day and every night, and he's watching over me 24-7. You know, that's what I know. So, let's clear out that stuff out of our heart. Clear it out. Let it go. Let the Word overtake the negative things in your life. Let the Word overtake the pain. Let the Word be a sound stronger in your head than the negative things that have happened in your life. Let it pass. Let it go. I'm going to leave you with this last thought. There's the past, the present, and the future. I'm not in the future. I'm in the present. I got a past. Some of that isn't too good. But I'm in the present. I got to enjoy today. Brothers, today I'm going to go home and I'm going to cut open a cantaloupe. When I go home and I'm going to cut open a watermelon and some grapes and I'm going to get me a cherry Pepsi. And I'm going to sit there and watch a movie on Netflix. And I'm going to put my feet up on a table. And I'm going to sit there and go, whoa, man, this is like really cool. I'm going to enjoy, enjoy my watermelon. My watermelon. And my <laughs> don't even. Don't and, and, and I'm going to enjoy all of that. And you know what? I don't care if you like it or you don't like it. That's what I'm going to do. You know? So, you can do whatever you want. You can go sit in a park. Some of us can. <laughs> go sit in a park and watch the pond and the ducks. And just enjoy that. You can go sit anywhere and just watch people walk. And enjoy that. And look how bad that guy is. <laughs> look at that guy. Look at the, the wife that guy has, man. She is like really mean. Thank God that ain't my wife. <laughs> go through a whole bunch of stuff. That, that thanking God and praising God, I can breathe. We're praying for somebody today that can't breathe. We just went to the hospital for one of the people in the church that we love a whole lot. And, and she don't want to be in the hospital. I got to go to church. I wasn't in a hospital today. Thank God. Thank God. Leave you with that. If uh, worship team can come forward.